We talked about elastic collisions in the lecture video, but we actually didn't have a full example problem included. Because elastic collisions are an extremely important concept in physics, we want to make sure that you see what a full elastic collision problem looks like as a full example video. So the idea behind elastic collisions is that we are able to figure out two different unknowns, the two final velocities of a collision that's about to happen, instead of either having to have the blocks stick together, so there's a single final unknown velocity, or being given one of the final velocities and finding the other. This is a chance for us to have two separate unknowns, which means we have two separate problems, uh, two separate equations. So in any collision, one thing we want to make sure that we recognize that no matter what kind of collision it is, elastic or not, we need to use momentum conservation. That is very, very important to us. The momentum conservation equation as a reminder to us, is m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. Now, if we choose this to be mass 1, mass 1 is 20 kilograms, and the initial velocity for it is positive because it's going to the right and we're just going to use that as our default positive direction 12 meters per second and then this would be mass 2 which is 3 kilograms and it is moving to the left left opposite directions means opposite signs this is going to be negative if we've already chosen the other one to be positive they cannot both have the same sign so if we plug in what we have so far we have 20 times 12 plus 3 times negative 15 equals 20 times our unknown v1 final plus 3 times our unknown v2 final. And these are not the same number value. So on the left, 195. And on the right, it's the same thing as we had moments ago. All right. So what we've gotten to is an equation with two separate unknowns. That means we need a second equation. Now the idea of an elastic collision is that kinetic energy is conserved. Now if we use the full kinetic energy idea, one half mv squared for each term, that ends up with really messy algebra. We have a digital handout in the additional help area of Blackboard that is really useful for you to look through so that you understand what that algebra would look like. But what we also discussed in the lecture video slides uh, is that we have this understanding that for one dimension, the speed towards each other, so the speed coming together, is the same kind of opposite and um, the same value is the speed apart, the speed moving apart. And so in words, that's what we kind of talked through in the video, but in an equation form, we also had this equation written down in our slides. The first velocity minus the second, so the speed coming together, the difference, is equal to the speed moving apart, but because it's opposite, it's now 2, the final velocity of 2 minus the initial velocity, or the final velocity of 1. So this is an equation, and I'm going to highlight it for us. This is an equation that will be given if we need it, and is a lot easier than kinetic energy being conserved. So in a one-dimensional collision, this works just fine. And we will not be doing two-dimensional elastic collisions. There is also a handout, not 10, um, there is also a handout for two-dimensional elastic collisions and why we don't do them here in Physics 125. All right, so 12 minus negative 15 
is equal to v2 final minus v1 final. So 12 minus negative 15 is a positive 27 equals v2 final minus v1 final. Two equations with the same two unknowns means we should solve for one of our unknowns. So I will add v1f to both sides plus v1f so that I can go through substitution. So here we have the other equation and we can substitute. So 195 equals 20 v1f plus 3 and then instead of V2F, we're going to substitute 27 plus V1F. We're going to distribute the 3, but in order to make sure we have enough space, I'm going to scroll down. All right. So we're going to distribute the 3. So what that means is it's 3 times 27, and we separately need 3 times V1F. So still 195 on the left. We still have this term, 20 times V1F. 3 times 27 is 81. 3 times V1F is 3V1F. We can subtract 81 from both sides. So we get 114 on the left and 23V1F on the right. So we can divide both sides by 23. And so we get that the original block, the 20 kilogram block that we decided was the mass number one, it is going to be moving at the end of the um, collision at positive 4.96 meters per second, which means that it is still moving to the right. It has just slowed down considerably. It's about 5 meters per second instead of the original 12. So it didn't actually bounce back because it's got so much mass that it just slowed down considerably. This smaller mass, on the other hand, is probably going to be bounced back quite quickly because the kinetic energy is conserved and this one has lost a lot of it. So now we plug it back into here. 27 plus 4.96 is equal to V2F. And so we get 31.96, positive still, meters per second is equal to V2F. So this smaller block has gone zooming away, also to the right, at a whopping almost 32 meters per second. So elastic collisions, what we will find are that things tend to move much faster than we expect from pretty much any of our other collisions. Most collisions that happen in real life at large scale are not elastic. There's a lot of kinetic energy that is lost. But at the um, atomic level, when things hit each other, they tend to do so without losing kinetic energy. And so elastic collisions are a really important problem type for physics. So it's worth us seeing a full example most of what we will do with elastic collisions will be more like the um, concept idea that we worked through the um, stationary ball example um, from our slides. But we do want to recognize the problem type and that it's two equations and two unknowns. Thanks for listening, and we'll be continuing on in Chapter 8 with our regular lecture video next.